In this video, we'll be showing you how to create an advanced button front and sleeve placket in vStitcher. We'll start with the standard placket which is a visible placket, also known as an American placket. This type of placket is usually found on everyday dress shirts and casual shirts, and is great for adding a finishing touch to a formal shirt. Let's start with downloading and opening a basic shirt from the cloud library. We'll start on the front right side. First, let's turn off the textures in the 2D window and enable the Trace Changes option and the Snap to Point and Snap to Edge options in the horizontal menu. Select the center part of the color edge and clone it by offset. We will use this internal line later to adjust the pattern shape. Next, we'll move the center edge to the right side by 3.5 centimeters and use the clone by offset tool to create two internal lines offset by 3.5 centimeters. Click on Extended to Edges and apply. Let's zoom in on the upper part of the folded area. You can see that it doesn't look right. First, we'll add a point in the center edge. In the context menu, turn it into a corner point and use the handles with a curved type to make the line smoother. Next, let's select the internal line that we created earlier. Flip it on the Y axis and align it to the center. Now adjust the points according to the dash line and the internal line, using the handles for easier editing. Next, enable the pattern pieces on the main body in the 3D window. Select the internal line on the front shape and change it into a fold line, and switch from normal to sharp fold. As you can see, the fold is in the opposite direction. Click on the Advanced option and change the Prepare Angle into a negative value to fix that. Now we can stitch the corresponding edges together and simulate. Use the styling tool if needed to adjust the shirt. Let's move to the other side of the shirt. The fabric of the standard placket is folded over the front of the shirt and stitched to create a strip. Let's start by canceling the symmetry of the pieces. Then we will slice the patterns for easier manipulation. As done earlier, we select part of the collar edge and clone it by offset to create an internal line which we will later use as a guideline for adjusting the pattern shape. Now let's select the vertical edge and move it by 1.4 centimeters to the right side. With the edge still selected, Use the Clone by Offset tool and create two new internal lines offset by negative 0.7 centimeters. As on the left pattern piece, we need to fix the upper part of the folded area. Let's enable the rulers in the 2D window and drag it down to create a new guideline. I'll snap the internal line to the center point of the collar and add a couple of new corner points with handles for easier pattern manipulation. Now I'll change the point's location to match the ruler and the guiding internal line. I'll use the handles to smoothen the lines. I'll move this point to be above the internal line to extend the pocket edge line. Then I'll change the curve type to sharp and adjust the line to be straight, making sure that the left corner is snapped to the guideline. We can now delete the guideline and extend the internal lines to the edges. Next, I'll enable the placket to be visible in the 3D window and update the simulation. Let's stitch the corresponding edges of the placket together and do the same for the strip.
We'll change the internal line to iron and update the simulation. Let's change to focus view to get a closer look at the strip render. I'll use a styling tool to straighten the strip. Now, select the fold line on the placket and clone it by 0.7 cm. Click on this new line and turn off the fold properties. Select both lines and change the stitch construction type to open and the depth to 0.05 cm. Now let's assign a single needle top stitching to those internal lines. For the next step, we'll sew the collar together with all the front pieces. To begin, click on the View in 3D to review the standard collar in the 3D window. Sew the collar edge to the placket and the front piece edge to the other edge of the collar. Then stitch the placket's upper edges together and do the same for the strip. Next, we'll stitch the strip to the collar using the match length feature for easier stitching. Let's simulate. Now, let's turn on the textures, assign a smart button to the front placket, and simulate again. I'll clone it by offset and add six more buttons along the placket with a distance of 8.5 centimeters between each button. Let's update the simulation. With the styling tool set to focus, we can refine the placket and the strip. Let's change a simulation to one step. This allows us to control the simulation and stop it until we achieve the result we're looking for. You can also strengthen the iron area by selecting the edge and turning on the force multiplier. Set the amount to 2 and the depth to 1.4 centimeters. Update the simulation to see the effect. Let's move to the sleeve placket. We want to create a tower style sleeve placket, which is ideal for a men's shirt. First, we'll select the sleeve pattern pieces and check Use in 3D in the context view. Before simulating, we'll go to arrange mode and move the placket into a separate cluster for easier editing. Make sure the wrap type is set to flat. Use the gizmo tool to adjust the location of the placket. Now we can simulate the sleeves. Let's recolor the placket to distinguish it from the sleeve. We can use a simple placket from the downloaded block as a start. To create the placket, we'll need two pattern pieces, one for the tower side and one for the binding side. To make the process faster, we'll duplicate the tower side. Note that the taller side of the placket is referred to as the tower side and the shorter side is called the binding side. Some patterns combine these two pieces into one. The benefit of separating the piece into two is you can use different fabrics for each one. Let's start by making the slit on the sleeve wider. To do so, I'll add a corner point and move it along the tower-shaped internal line to create a wider gap. We'll also move the corner point of the sleeve hem parallel to the bottom edge. 
Let's start with the binding side. We can hide the tower side from the 3D window for a clearer view. On the binding side, we'll delete the roof shape part and all the extra points. And change the upper corner points curved type to sharp. We'll add a corner point to the center of each of the shorter sides and also add a horizontal internal line. Extend it to the edges and place in the center of the rectangle. Then change the internal line into a sharp fold line and adjust the location of the pattern piece in the 3D window with the gizmo tool. Let's change the color of the backside to see if the fold is angled correctly. We can see the backside color. This means we must change the prepare angle into a negative value to change the angle of the fold, which can be done under advanced settings. Now we can sew the edges of the placket to the slit we created on the sleeve. Let's simulate. Next, we'll continue with the tower side. The width of the piece is 2.54 centimeters. I will move the two corner points of the right side up by 2.54 centimeters. Change the curve type of the left corner point to sharp and use your ruler as a guideline for aligning the points. The final pattern piece should be a rectangular shape with the roof shape piece on the left bottom half. Now, add a corner point to the center of the edge on the right side. For the final step, draw a horizontal line in the center of the pattern. Extend it to the edges and change this line into a fold line. Click on View in 3D to review the tower piece in the 3D window. Again, let's check if the prepare angle is correct. As before, we have to change the angle into a negative value and the fold type to sharp. Check if all the stitches for this pattern piece are correct and remove or add new stitches where needed. Don't forget to move the tower side to a higher 3D layer than the binding side. Let's simulate to see the result. Last, we'll delete the stitches between the sleeve and the cuff. And with the multi-stitch tool, we'll sew these pieces together with the new placket included and simulate. To check that all the stitches and patterns are in the correct place, you can unbutton the cuff and recolor the binding side of the placket. Everything looks great. And there you have it. A great way to create an advanced sleeve and button front pocket in V-Stitcher. To learn more, visit our help center at help.browseware.com.